Welcome to the 2023 CompTIA A+220-1101 mobile devices practice test. This test will have 20 questions with explained answers that will help you prepare for the test. Be sure to reboot that light button by turning it white. Now here's your CompTIA instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, what is the purpose of a device lock? A, show strength. B, to secure a device against unauthorized access. C, encrypts data. D. Connects routers. The correct answer is B. To secure a device against unauthorized access. Setting a device to lock itself after a certain amount of time of inactivity is a standard feature on most devices today. It's important to use a unique key or password to unlock the device. Question 2. Which of the following is the most secure authentication method? A. Email sign-on. B. Anonymous hashing. C. Two-factor authentication. D. A password with 16 characters including lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and special characters. The correct answer is C. Two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication, or 2FA, is an extra layer of protection used to ensure the security of online accounts beyond just a username and password. The first factor is commonly a passcode, while the second factor is a unique piece of data. The second factor often comes as a random number sent to a mobile device, but could be a unique data set such as a fingerprint, retina, or facial imaging. Question 3. What type of encryption is used to ensure that data is only accessed by authorized parties? A. Data Encryption Standards, DES. B. AES-256 Encryption. C. Bcrypt. D. Bitcoin. The correct answer is B. AES-256 Encryption. AES-256 encryption is virtually uncrackable using any brute force method. It would take millions of years to break it using the current computing technology and capabilities. However, no encryption standard or system is completely secure. DES was first standardized in 1977 and, because of its key length of 56 bits, is currently too insecure for modern applications. Question 4. What is the purpose of a password manager? A. Helps create unique passwords. B. To store and manage complex passwords securely. C. Suggest passwords based on your personality and astrological sign. D. Automatically updates your passwords for you. The correct answer is B. To store and manage complex passwords securely. Password managers typically require a user to generate and remember one master password to unlock and access information stored in their databases. Password managers can also integrate multi-factor authentication and utilize in-device biometrics like Face ID or Touch ID. Question 5. Which of the following is the most secure way to store passwords? A. On a spreadsheet in a thumb drive under your mattress. B. Written on a coaster. C. Fun memory games. D. In a secure password manager. The correct answer is D. In a secure password manager. A password manager or web browser can store all your passwords securely, so you don't have to worry about remembering them. This allows you to use unique, strong passwords for all your important accounts, rather than using the same password for all of them, which you should never do. Question 6. What is the difference between a SIM card and a micro SD card? A. SIM card is a reward for playing the video game, The Sims. B. Micro SD is always encrypted. C. A micro SD card is used to store data for communication on a cellular network, while a SIM card is used to store data for using on a device. D. A SIM card is used to store data for communication on a cellular network, while micro SD card is used to store data for use on a device. The correct answer is D. A SIM card is used to store data for communication on a cellular network, 
while a micro SD card is used to store data for use on a device. Mobile devices often have input slots for both cards as one adds mobility while the other adds storage. Question 7. What is the most common type of wireless network? A. Wi-Fi B. Cellular C. Radio D. Spectrographic The correct answer is A. Wi-Fi Wi-Fi is a wireless networking technology that uses radio waves to provide wireless high-speed Internet access. A common misconception is that the term Wi-Fi is short for wireless fidelity. However, Wi-Fi is a trademarked phrase that refers to IEEE 802.11x standards. Question 8. What type of security protocol is used to encrypt wireless communications? A. Wi-Fi Protected Access, WPA, or Wi-Fi Protected Access 2, WPA2. B. Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, HTTPS. C. AES Advanced Encryption Standard. D. DES Data Encryption Standard. The correct answer is A. Wi-Fi Protected Access WPA or Wi-Fi Protected Access 2 WPA2. Encrypted Security Protocol that Protects Internet Traffic on Wireless Networks The second generation of the Wi-Fi Protected Access Security Protocol, WPA2 addresses earlier flaws and offers more powerful encryption. Question 9. What type of malware can be used to gain access to a user's personal information? A. Ransomware B. Spyware C. Trojan D. Pop-up The correct answer is B. Spyware Software that enables a user to obtain covert information about another's computer activities by transmitting data covertly from their hard drive. Websites may engage in spyware behaviors like web tracking. Hardware devices may also be affected. Question 10. What type of malware is used to extort money from victims? A. Spyware B. Trojan C. Ransomware D. Pop-up The correct answer is C. Ransomware a type of malicious software designed to block access to a computer system until a sum of money is paid. Ransomware attacks are typically carried out using a Trojan disguised as a legitimate file that the user is tricked into downloading or opening when it arrives in an email attachment. Question 11. Which of the following is the primary purpose of an MDM solution? A. To provide a secure connection. B. To monitor device usage. C. To centrally manage devices. D. To protect the data stored on the device. The correct answer is C. To centrally manage devices. An MDM, Mobile Device Management Solution, is designed to centrally manage and secure mobile devices, such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops, in an enterprise environment. Through MDM, IT administrators can remotely configure settings, restrict access to certain features and applications, deploy software updates and security patches, and monitor device usage. Question 12. What is the purpose of a mobile VPN? A. To secure remote access to the corporate network. B. To remotely manage the device. C. To provide an additional layer of network protection. D. To encrypt data stored on the device. The correct answer is A. To secure remote access to the corporate network. A mobile virtual private network, VPN, is a technology that provides a secure connection between a user's device and the corporate network. This secure connection allows users to access internal resources over the public Internet, such as applications, files, and printers, while they are outside the office. Additionally, a mobile VPN can also be used to protect data in transit, ensuring that sensitive information is encrypted before it leaves the device. Question 13. 
Which of the following is an example of an access control list, ACL? A. A list of approved devices. B. A list of approved users. C. A list of approved websites. D. A list of approved applications. The correct answer is B. A list of approved users. An access control list, ACL, is a list of users who are authorized to access a particular system or resource. ACLs can be used to restrict access to certain resources, such as data, applications, or services, based on users' identity and role within the organization. For example, an ACL could be used to control access to a corporate network, allowing only certain users to log in and access the network's resources. Question 14. Which of the following is an example of a mobile security risk? A. Unsecured Wi-Fi networks. B. Unencrypted data. C. Outdated operating systems. D. Weak passwords. The correct answer is D, weak passwords. Weak passwords are one of the most common mobile security risks, as they can be easily guessed or cracked using brute force methods. It is important for users to create strong passwords that are at least eight characters long with a mix of numbers, symbols, and upper and lower case letters. Additionally, users should be encouraged to use unique passwords for each online account and to change their passwords regularly. Question 15. Which of the following methods is the least secure for authentication? A. Email sign-on. B. Single sign-on. C. Two-factor authentication. D. Biometrics. The correct answer is A. Email sign-on. Email sign-on is one of the least secure methods of authentication. As it only requires a user to enter their email address and password in order to access a system or resource, this method of authentication does not provide any additional layers of security, making it easier for hackers to gain access to an account if they gain access to the user's email address and password. Therefore, two-factor authentication or biometrics are much more secure methods of authentication. Question 16. What is the best practice for securing mobile devices in the workplace? A. Require a password to access the device. B. Enable full disk encryption. C. Disable Bluetooth. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. The best practice for securing mobile devices in the workplace is to implement a comprehensive security strategy that includes all of the following measures. Requiring a password to access the device, enabling full disk encryption, disabling Bluetooth and other wireless communication, using mobile device management, MDM, solutions to centrally manage devices, and using mobile threat defense solutions to detect and protect against malicious threats. Question 17. What steps can an organization take to protect mobile devices from physical damage? A. Require a password to access the device. B. Enable full disk encryption. C. Use a rugged case. D. Disable Bluetooth. The correct answer is C. Use a rugged case. Organizations can protect mobile devices from physical damage by using cases or covers designed for extreme conditions, such as moisture, dust, and shock. These cases are often referred to as rugged cases and provide additional protection for the device from drops, spills, and other potential hazards. Additionally, organizations should also ensure that all users are trained on proper device handling to reduce the risk of damage. Question 18. What is the purpose of a mobile application sandbox? A. To secure remote access to the corporate network. B. To centrally manage applications and data. C. To provide an additional layer of security. D. To encrypt data stored on the device. The correct answer is C. To provide an additional layer of security. 
A mobile application sandbox is a technology that provides a secure environment for running applications, allowing them to be tested or used without exposing the device or data to potential risks. Sandboxes provide an additional layer of security by isolating the application from other system resources, ensuring that malicious code cannot spread or damage other parts of the system. Question 19. What is the best practice for securing mobile devices when connecting to public Wi-Fi networks? A. Require a password to access the device. B. Enable full disk encryption. C. Disable Bluetooth. D. Use a virtual private network. The correct answer is D. Use a virtual private network. The best practice for securing mobile devices when connecting to public Wi-Fi networks is to use a virtual private network, VPN. A VPN provides an encrypted tunnel between the device and the Internet, ensuring that all data sent and received over the connection is protected from interception or tampering. Additionally, users should also be sure to use strong passwords and enable two-factor authentication where available. Question 20. What is the purpose of a mobile device management MDM solution? A. To protect a secure connection. B. To monitor device usage. C. To centrally manage devices. D. To protect the data stored on the device. The correct answer is C. To centrally manage devices. An MDM, Mobile Device Management Solution, is designed to centrally manage and secure mobile devices, such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops, in an enterprise environment. Through MDM, IT administrators can remotely configure settings, restrict access to certain features and applications, deploy software updates and security patches, and monitor device usage. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out these videos that can help you with your CompTIA exam. If you need more help beyond these videos, we have free practice tests on our website. We have all the links down in the description below. Don't forget to reboot that like button and subscribe to our channel.